Hello all, uh, this is uh, Roop and my friend uh, Siddharth. We are presenting overflowing the kernel stack with ABBF. Yeah, so um, ABBF actually enabled uh, us in a way of innovations where we can extend user space programs into kernel uh, in the runtime, ensuring all this uh, stability and uh, safety. And this guaranteed safety is being uh, possible because of uh, statically, uh, statically verifying the ABBF code uh, by, by the ABBF in, uh, verifier engine. However, uh, the EPPF verifier is uh, uh, inherently assuming that um, all the safety conditions and checks it, that it has um, validated is being upheld by the execution environment. And uh, one such assumptions is availability of stack space uh, in, in the EPPF program. So uh, giving this, giving this actually, um, uh, we kind of found a couple of uh, issues uh, with with the stack uh, uh, around like attaching it and also some kind of uh, things with the nesting. And before before going into it, we uh, we're, go we're going to give some background uh, around like how the BBF program is going to interact with the stack. So. Uh, so uh, whenever uh, a BPF program is called at, at an attach point and, and dynamically, so uh, BPF program is going to inherit the stack. Uh, inherit the same stack that it is running on. And uh, this uh, stack is being limited to 512 bytes. And So uh, yeah, and if if a if, if a helper function or k func is being called, it it is, it is again going to inherit the same uh, inherit the same stack, and um, yeah. So now we in this uh, part of this in the part of the section, we're going to concentrate like whether we can increase this 512 bytes to uh, to a larger number, and yeah, for that like we have to use a couple of components in EPPF. Uh, one such is uh, BPF to BPF calls. So. Uh, Whenever uh, yeah, BPF to BPF calls is uh, similar to the uh, the conventional function calls. In in EB, in EBPF, uh, when you call a function uh, using BPF to BPF calls, it is going to uh, um, create new stack frame, and uh, all these calls are going to have uh, contain in the same program, and it's still finite all bytes. And um, yeah, the next component uh, is a BPF tail calls. So whenever you call, uh, you, whenever you use a BPF tail call, it's the jump instruction is going to uh, call uh, the BP, BPF uh, pro, a new BPF program. So you can use this for calling BPF to BPF uh, programs, and uh, it's going to use the latest uh, call uh, stack frame, and then it's going to uh, reuse it and then grow its stack from there. Then you, and the new uh, BPF program is going to grow it from there. And uh, yeah, so uh, this is how we can see visualize like in how it calls and it, it can grow the stack like this. And what do we have right now with these two components, uh, in, with these two combinations, uh, what, what are the current checks and limits that the verifier has and the runtime has is uh, whenever you have this combination, it's not 512 bytes, but you'll, it is actually reduced to 256 bytes. But uh, in the runtime, uh, the JIT actually limits instructions where uh, when I recall BPF tail calls, it's going to check how many tail, tail calls it's happening, and the limit right now is 33 tail calls. And if we use this combination, and then uh, if you if you craft a program uh, the, using all the limits, then you can actually reach to a program where it, uh, it, the 512 bytes program is being grown to uh, possible to grow it to uh, eight kilobytes of uh, uh, stack uh, space. So, uh, so what's happening here? So, um, the first thing is Verifier is actually uh, making two critical assumptions about the runtime. And the first one being um, kernel stack will always have eight kilobytes of stack space available uh, for a BBF program to run. And the second one being the total size of the BBF program's kernel stack. And the stack for any helper function it calls will be less than eight kilobytes.
So with, with, with this background, we're going to concentrate uh, the, couple, uh, the first problem that, that happened, uh, which is around uh, the attachment. And then we'll go to the other problem, uh, which is around the nesting. So in the first problem, we're going to concentrate on the base kernel of the uh, base kernel stack. And um, the first thing uh, we're going to uh, we're going to uh, ask is: so all, uh, is it is it always the base kernel stack being innocuous, and then is it always small? And um, there have been uh, cases that, that we have seen in uh, the community where um, uh, file systems and networking kernel stacks can grow uh, into bigger stack stack number and what and the question is going to be like this where what if you attach a, a bpf program on top of this unclean stack to to just uh, you know explore on this we we considered xfs file system and then we ran a couple of test cases where uh, uh, under the constrained memory uh, conditions and so you can see here uh, the, the base section where it has the xfs and then the uh, and when it hits some kind of exceptional uh, path where it, it needs to find some kind of memory and then scheduling, it actually grow the stack to a very huge extent, and we almost reach uh, more than uh, six kilobytes of base stack. And uh, yeah, yeah, in that like we uh, we chose the top function where uh, which is which is part of scheduler functions and. Um, we, we chose uh, K-probe, uh, uh, I mean, we have uh, K-probes are offended to dynamically attach this function at the runtime. And uh, when we tried it using K-probes, K um, we, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be, I'll be showing at the end. And before that, like, you know, I mentioned the eight kilobytes of program that we have, uh, uh, that, we, uh, that, that it um, explained in the first section. Um, so uh, this, is how, this is what it looks like. Uh, so we have the base attached uh, mechanism of K probe in the base section, and then we have our uh, our 33 tail call uh, BPF programs uh, continue, continuously uh, in, next to each other, and then we have we have the helper function which is being called on the top of uh, the 33rd uh, program. And uh, yeah, these three sections actually you know combine uh, consume almost like more than 10 kilobytes of uh, almost near 10 kilobytes of um, stack memory. And if, if we just add up all these numbers, uh, the base part, which is bigger, and then that has uh, attached type function, and then the eight kilobytes of uh, BPF program, and then uh, helper functions, we actually overflowed the first, um, uh, overflowed the stack. And then these are the first uh, uh, problem that we identified. And my friend said that is going to explain uh, the problems that he has encountered uh, in, around stack overflow because of the nesting thing. Yeah, hello everyone. Thanks, group. Uh, now I'm gonna discuss about how uncontrolled nesting in BPF program is causing uh, issues like stack overflow. Group already discussed that base kernel stack can be bloated so that he attached a BPF program with all the combining both BPF to BPF calls and tail calls to exhaust the stack. So let's see how we can leverage uh, helper functions and how we can extend that part to overflow the stack. So the, the point we are making is Verifier assumes that the helper function, helper calls uh, stack usage is small. And there is a new desire to nest multiple BPF programs is violating this Verifier assumptions. So the old way is that in tra both trace points and K probes, uh, the nesting is completely restricted. So how they are doing it is, they are using a global variable BPF prog active uh, to check whether a BPF program is running on the same CPU. So if if a new uh, if a new BPF program which is called in, inside the same CPU, then it will prevent it from running. So what happens? I want to discuss on what happens if these checks are not implemented in uh, in the in these BPF type programs. So consider a BPF, two BPF programs, each has, each has been calling the same helper function. So first BPF program is attached to a kernel function, and the second BPF program is attached to this helper and calling the same helper function. This may cause a recursive loop, and, if, and this potentially cause a stack overflow. So obviously, the limitations of this approach that uh, k-probes and trace points took is 
uh, when there is a BPF program which is attached to a helper or a function which is called inside these helper functions, there is a chance that these uh, tracing events might not uh, get triggered. So to overcome these limitations in BPF trampoline type uh, programs, uh, people are, I mean, uh, it was implemented that only, I mean, uh, it is implemented to nest multiple BPF programs on the same CPU. It is done by using prog active variable. And, and obviously the limitations of this approach is you can nest multiple BPF program. And uh, uh, if you were able to nest like 33 or more than 33 BPF programs, you, you will be able to overflow the counter stack. This is the, uh, this is one of the experiment that we did. Uh, we took a KPRO uh, BPF program and attached it to this socket function. And this KPRO is uh, program is something like what group discussed, which is of eight kilobytes of, uh, which takes eight eight kilobytes of stack switch combined with all these tail calls and BPF to BPF calls. And there is this another BPF type program called uh, uh, which is of type F entry, uh, which is also is of size eight kilobytes and is attached to a helper call which is made inside the first BPF program. And through this, we are able to exhaust this type. And here is the demo video, which is showing the same. And I'll try to. Oh, I don't know. Ah, uh, it's it's not. I'm unable to. Uh, it may not work. I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like, not the redirecting. I'll here. skip that yeah. for now. If you guys are interested, you can uh, look through look through this video in our slides. And these are uh, these are all other potential attach points we have explored. Like you can attach uh, two. Obviously, we can do two trampoline type BPF programs, and we can also attach a F entry type BPF program on a trace point, and we can also do an F entry on a K probe. So, uh, if you might be wondering if we are able to, uh, if without using tail calls and BPF to BPF calls, can we exhaust the stack? It's possible just by attaching this uh, helper BPF program, I mean the second BPF program in the in the figure, uh, by attaching the same pro program multiple times, we can exhaust the stack. So here comes, uh, we, we have uh, defined our two problems. So there is, uh, we want to discuss on what could be the probable solution and related questions. So the requirements that we define to uh, address these problems are, Either kernel runtime should be ensured and able to accommodate the stack space required for the BBF program to run, or it should entirely prevent it from with, prevent the PBF program from running. The probable solution for the problem one that Roop has discussed, where he's able to bloat the entire base kernel stack, is the problem is that a BBF program is attached to an unknown stack state. So if we are able to provide a new stack for this BPF program so that this BPF program are able to run on this new stack. So on based on memory requirements, this can uh, elevate the issue that Rube mentioned. And for the second problem, for the uncontrolled nesting, we can extend this uh, stack switching solution. And, and as, the limit, as the memory is limited, we can, uh, we can pose limits on this uh, number of nesting that we do. And this is a point for discussion. So in both of these cases, there, as the limit, memory is so limited, if we uh, ask kernel for more stack space, or if you want to nest more BPF programs, there might be a chance that uh, some BPF pro programs might never get executed. And the open question that we want to pose is, what happens if a BPF program never get executed? How does it impact uh, BPF uh, program extensions, which are designed for mostly BP, uh, Linux security modules or the SecCom filters because the policies that were enforced might not get executed. The other question is, can orchestration tools like BPFD uh, can alert uh, admins to able to monitor these BPF programs and prevent the stack overflows from ever, ever from occurring? So in summary, we discussed how BPF programs interact with kernel stack. Then uh, we showed two problems that we encountered by first one is due to the incorrect assumptions about the availability of stack space for a BPF program to run. 
and the second one is due to uncontrolled nesting. Finally, we raised a uh, discussion points on what could be the probable solution to mitigate these issues, and yeah, and we raised some open questions as well. Thanks. Would like to take questions. I can ask a question. Um, did you try to implement the stack switching approach? Like, what would it take to to get to this point? And also, like, how do you deal with nesting in that case? Yeah, we are still working on the solution. Uh, we are facing some issues like double fold when there is nesting. So we are still working on the solution. And then also the follow-up question, but if you're still working on it, like how much overhead would that incur, right, for the execution? Yeah, we haven't tested yeah. that yet. Um, yeah, so I, I guess I was, I was thinking about, um, you've got like a, a user space daemon is in, inserting the BPF program, right? And so maybe one of the semantic questions ends up being, like, is this something that when you're loading the BPF programs, we can somehow calculate what the poss maximum possible stack would be, and then you know limit that in some way so that it can reflect back up? I'm thinking about the last one around alerts. Yeah, uh, what what we want to ask is if a user space daemon able to analyze how much a pro uh, kernel process can, how much stack space a kernel process can take, and able to assess if this BPF program. Uh, can overflow the stack, then he can prevent it from being attached in the first place. Yes, so I, I guess that has a maybe a parallel with the exceptions discussion earlier of, of um, uh, like how many guarantees can we provide ahead of time so that at runtime you don't have some sort of breakage of your yeah. um, your changes. I can make a comment on that. So in general. In the kernel, there's absolutely no guarantee that the stack doesn't overflow even without BPF, and they do overflow if you call the functions in the wrong order. If you nest file systems and networking and block devices in the wrong way, then the kernel stack overflows. It happens all the time. It's just we don't talk about it as much. Um, okay. And we, we only have eight kilobytes available on 32-bit architectures, so even if BPF, like nested BPF programs can get to eight kilobytes, you're already toast. I managed to catch it before. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think I think the, the the interesting thing about the BPF in in the context of the stack here is that you know whereas maybe for the rest of the kernel we can kind of foresee it a little bit more ahead of time. We maybe can do some testing and and stuff like that. The, there's really very little understanding that we may have about what the BPF is going to do on a particular a particular path, right? So to to that question that you asked before, it's like I think that we can know how much, I mean, may, maybe we can do some more static stuff to know about that BPF piece. But the problem is that we don't know about that kernel piece in general, and we don't know either about the helper function piece, really, uh, when it comes down to it. So maybe we could somehow learn a little bit more about the helper functions and how much stack they use. Um, and that would really go a long way to helping to know what this is going to do before we load it. Oh, this is going to be a big throw. Okay. I might also speak a little bit to that. Um, so on the Cilium project, we use a lot of tail calls. And I don't know how deep they go, but maybe six or eight programs tail calls deep. Uh, could be more. I think we have 20 or 30 programs. Um, but they don't all call sequentially. Um, so like we have like a full CI that we're running through all the different variations. And we're trying to ensure that we're exercising all those code paths. Uh, and then we're chasing against various kernels so that hopefully on particular kernels we'll be able to detect this. But I don't think we're doing so much on terms of platforms. I, I guess the problem explodes quite a, quite a bit, but um, I don't see anything fundamentally different in terms of testing uh, from a particular BPF applications perspective around this. I mean, you can still spin things up, run it against a kernel, try things out. You can take this. 
thank you. So instead of using the BPF tail, uh, what we have done in Meta is like uh, create an orchestration chainer and then use those functions using app replace. So you can load the programs independently and then do the app replace to have the complete uh, tailing of uh, the BPF chainer functions. So that could basically solve the stacking problem. Maybe one thing that would also be worth looking into, like uh, analyzing uh, the kernel under some workload to see like where are the heavy hitters in terms of kernel stack usage, right? I mean, aside from the 32 bit issue that you have anyway, that you mentioned, um, but maybe it's also worth to analyze those particular spots and perhaps they could be refactored differently or I don't know. I don't know if you did some work. In the, the, the main thing we do at the moment is static analysis where we limit the amount of stack space for any function to between one or two kilobytes per function, but that of course easily escalates. Uh, one thing that I have been thinking about doing is to have more runtime testing where we can do, uh, mark the stack, part of the stack read only so we trap whenever we exceed something like eight kilobytes or 12 kilobytes of a 64-bit kernel stack and then print the backtrace to see where exactly we use the most amount of stack in, in a given system at any given point. And then we can adjust the start of the stack for the kernel to get to a point where we can very exactly see does anything use more than 11.2 kilobytes of stack and um, that, that gives us some some indication. It's still not no proof, but it has has some way of testing it better than we do at the moment. Any other questions, comments? Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>